of Council for the International Intellectual Property Alliance. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. I'm pleased to appear before the Commission on behalf of IIPA, a private sector coalition formed in 1984 of trade associations representing U.S. copyright-based industries. In testimony this afternoon, I'd like to assist the Commission in the preparation of its report by providing concrete information pertaining to tariff and non-tariff barriers in India involving IP rights or IP intensive businesses with a focus on IIPA members' core businesses. The key impediments to IIPA members doing business in India are IP theft in the form of piracy and counterfeiting, and in addition, India imposes market access and discriminatory barriers on IIPA members' businesses, which hinder their entry into the market. First, I'd like to provide an overview of trends and policies in India, including measures related to IPR. India should provide fertile ground for trade in copyright intensive goods and services, and this is demonstrated by a large local industry. For example, India produces the greatest number of films in the world, estimated at over 1,000 full-length feature films in 2013. Both the creative and diverse Indian and international music market retains a prolific publishing industry estimated informally at 19,000 publishers producing 90,000 titles per year and supports a vibrant software market made up of distributors but also IT and business process outsourcing as the largest sources of revenue. Unfortunately, content theft, piracy, and market access barriers negatively impact the ability of domestic and foreign creators alike to fully enjoy their rights resulting in significant underperformance. Problems include massive and growing online and mobile, smartphone and tablet piracy, unauthorized camcording of movies in the theaters, unauthorized use of software and public materials, including imports of pirate publications from locales like Bangladesh, and exports of India-only books throughout the world, lack of priority assigned to copyright piracy cases, lack of uniform enforcement procedures among different regions, law enforcement authorities, and market access barriers such as high taxes must provide requirements in the pay TV sector and discriminatory procurement practices. The Copyright Act was amended in 2012 with some positive features. However, some aspects of the reform remain problematic, such as inadequate protection for access control technological protection measures, and against trafficking and circumvention technologies, software, devices, and services. Burdensome restrictions on freedom of contract that are at odds with industry practices and threaten the fabric of long-standing business models and trips and burn incompatible compulsory and statutory licenses. Copyright holders generally have positive relationships with Indian government authorities, including the Ministry of Human Resources and Development, and I would note here the Indian government runs significant number of raids and there are several effective court mechanisms that remain viable including Anton Pillar, John Doe, and Mareva orders. Police will often take actions on Suomoto cognizance and actions against release groups engaged in the unauthorized camcording of movies and cinemas and court orders disabling access to dedicated piracy websites in India have had a temporary ameliorative <coughs> effect. And while unauthorized camcording is down somewhat in 2013 compared with 2012, when India sourced camcords were responsible for 53% of all illegal detections of major US motion pictures in the entire Asia region, internet piracy and to a lesser extent, mobile device piracy, smartphone and tablet piracy remain serious. A developing national IPR strategy in India offers a forum to achieve results in line with Prime Minister Singh's call for India to experience a decade of innovation. However, an environment in which piracy persists, coupled with policies put into place to disfavor foreign right holders, results in a highly distorted marketplace. Some examples of market access restrictions which are discussed in far greater detail in my written testimony include bans on the exclusivity in the pay TV sector and similar restrictions in the direct to home market, the reception of satellite programs with a personal dish in an individual home. 
imposing must provide restrictions on right holders. Second is price controls on the pay TV sector. Third is inordinately high and discriminatory entertainment taxes on theatrical admissions, VAT taxes, services taxes, and unconstitutional localized taxes based on the language of the film. Price fixing on tickets in South India as well as quotas on the number of screenings per title per day are also problematic. Onerous restrict regulations on uplink and downlink of satellite signals beaming into India. High tariffs on entertainment software and hardware products, including PC game products, console game products, game console hardware <coughs> and game activation cards, an array of software goods and services taxes, including transfer pricing rules based on global profit split attributions to outsourced R&D activity in India, and double taxation of software as both a good and a service, an array of technology and procurement mandates which capture software, uh, and related uh, access barrier, the long patent pendency, which is also <laughs> hindering R&D investment, ICT innovation, and national competitiveness. Um, for many years, stakeholders have urged the Indian government to take into account the important role that IP and innovation play in the Indian economy. The World Intellectual Property Organization has worked with over 40 countries to conduct studies calculating the contribution of their copyright industries to their national economies. India's MHRD and other agencies are currently considering the feasibility of such a study. Other studies have measured the contribution of certain sectors to national economies, including India. For example, the Motion Picture Association of Asia Pacific has issued a study, Economic Contribution of the Indian Film and Television Industry 2010. Further studies have measured the multiplier effects of reducing piracy on contribution to GDP, job growth, and tax revenues. For example, in 2010, BSA, now BSA the Software Alliance, and IDC issued Piracy Impact Study, the Economic Benefits of Reducing Software Piracy. The India report from that study concluded that reducing the PC software piracy rate in India by 10 percentage points in four years would deliver $4.66 billion in new economic activity, 59,700 new IT jobs, and over $500 million in additional tax revenues to the Indian government by uh, last year, by 2013. Um, India last conducted a nationwide review of the contribution of copyright to the Indian economy in 1995, finding that copyright made up over 5% of the, in, of the Indian economy. All of these statistics help make the case for stronger support for IP intensive industries in India as a driver of its own economic growth and highlight the harm being caused by restrictive piracy and trade and FDI policies to India's own economic, social, and cultural well-being. Well, given time constraints, I won't go into detail on the significant restrictive trade and FDI policies currently maintained or recently adopted by India um, or the quantitative uh, measures of the harm being caused by those um, restrictions, which I know that the Commission is looking at and is the purpose of conducting this study. Um, but with that, what I will say is that we are here uh, to help provide the detailed information that the Commission is going to need to um, be able to issue its report with um, great specificity on not only the cost of all of the barriers that are experienced in India, including piracy, counterfeiting, and the market barriers that I've mentioned in passing in my testimony, um, but also what India can do to po positively further its cause and also to help along the um, bilateral trade relationship with the United States to create win-win situations. I just got back from over two weeks in India, and I can tell you that um, not only are foreign right holders suffering in India, but the, the local publishing, movie, software, music industries are significantly suffering um, from uh, these barriers that I've described in passing. So with that, thank you very much, and I look forward to addressing uh, your questions and comments.